Welcome to everyone here in person and watching via the webcast online of the principal's address to the university. My name is Caitlin Lloyd, and I will be your moderator for the discussion period following the address. This fall, Principal Fautier and I shadowed each other. She came with me to my classes in my, I am taking for my bioresource engineering program to experience a McGill education and to talk with students about their priorities. Then I spent a day shadowing her in her job as principal, where I experienced a very busy schedule and met with many members of the McGill community. Professor Feltzi began as principal in September 2013 and spent the first term talking with as many members of the McGill community as she could to understand uh, what they found was important to them now and in the future. Today, Principal Suzanne Feltzi will present a vision and direction for McGill over the next five years. Af after the address, you will have the opportunity to comment or ask questions rego regarding the vision and priorities. Before we start, I just like to rhyme, remind people in the room to put their phones on silent. Thank you. Principal Fauci. Merci, Caitlin. Merci. Bonjour. Good afternoon to all of you in the room and on the web. Thank you for being here. Merci d'être avec nous uh, cet après-midi. As Kathleen said, I want to share with you a vision for McGill, a vision that comes from this community and belong to this community. Since arriving on campus, I've had the opportunity to meet with many of you and participate in many, many activities. This has helped me crystallize the hopes and the ambitions of this community, also your goals. In my installation address last fall, I mentioned Professor Henry Minsberg's notion of communities of engagement, organizations guided not by hierarchies of authority, but by mutual respect. It is in this spirit that I use the word community. There are many different McGill experiences, as many McGill experiences as there are people at McGill. But I believe that we are united by shared values and goals. The joy we have in learning, in creativity, in discovery. Our commitment to excellence and our love of challenge. A sense of responsibility to better our society through the work that we do. And we are united by the privilege of being part of a great and unique university in one of the world's most creative cities. It is my hope and my job to build communities of engagement here at McGill. For us at McGill, I believe our engagement centers on a common vision for our university. We want McGill to be open, connected, and purposeful. A university open to new ideas, other ways of looking at the world, open to cultural and human diversity, open to new ways of doing things. A university connected to its local and global community, connected across disciplines, boundaries of geography and sectors. A university with a clear sense of purpose because what we do, learning, using and advancing knowledge, exploring new paths in knowledge has never mattered more to our community and the world. The mission of all universities centers on three main elements, teaching and learning, research, and service to society. The vision for our university is an expression of how we see our mission today at McGill, building on our strengths and identity, and in the context of the 21st century, 
a time when the world has never been more open and connected or changing faster. Since arriving at McGill last September, I've had the pleasure of rediscovering my university and its strong sense of identity and purpose. I've also been able to see the tremendous amount of work that has been done here to shape the future of our university. McGill's community has engaged in several important strategic planning exercises. Only a few years ago, McGill developed and adopted new academic and research strategic plans. As well, the university has engaged in substantial discussions and work around important topics for us, topics such as our commitment and promotion of diversity, community engagement, and sustainability. Based on this foundation, I want to propose to you five priorities on which we can mobilize our energy, effort, and resources, and continue to build an open, connected, and purposeful McGill. These priorities have emerged from conversations and consultations with many of you and the constructive and wise advice you have generously offered. The first three priorities relate to our mission and stem from the important questions we need to ask ourselves. First, student life and learning. What should a 21st century McGill experience look like? How do we create a rich learning environment for a new generation of students who are ready to be active participants in their own education, eager to start using in concrete ways what they learn in the classroom, and ready to be connected both locally and globally? How can we embrace the rapid changes, cultural and technological, in the university landscape while strengthening McGill's core essence. By integrating student life and learning in the portfolio of the deputy provost in 2006, McGill was ahead of its time. Our aim now should be to combine life and learning into a distinctive, pioneering, and enriching higher education experience for all McGill students. Our vision is to create the McGill commitment as a truly unique McGill specific expression of our mission. Translated into action, the McGill commitment means offering McGill undergraduate students a greater opportunity to challenge themselves through experiential learning, whether through an internship, co-op placement, international exchange, or undergraduate research experience. It means giving graduate students and postdoctoral fellows an opportunity to take a graduate certificate in either management or in teaching for higher education, depending on where their career ambitions lie. And we need also to help them prepare for a future, for their future, through deep disciplinary grounding and strong supervision. It means increasing the use of technology as an educational aid, adding more smart classrooms and supporting all professors who use this technology. For all students, it means developing a comprehensive suite of advising, mentoring, and support services to help in all aspects of learning. Time for a drink. <laughs> <laughs> the next priority is research. Where will the greatest leaps of knowledge come from? And how can we nurture an environment in which game-changing questions are asked? I believe that great research starts with curious minds, minds that are open to challenging the conventional wisdom. McGill's environment, as you know, has shown itself uniquely suited to nurture discovery research and scholarship. We have great strengths across the disciplines, 
a diverse population with many different cultural and societal backgrounds, and an international home city that bursts with creativity. Most importantly, McGill has always focused on meeting the highest level of quality on a global scale. As the former president of the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council, I know that sustaining a world-class research program takes a lot of hard work and determination, and a local environment that is supportive and stimulating. To ensure that we maintain such an environment at McGill over the next several years, we will develop a McGill seed fund that supports early stage curiosity-driven research and scholarship. The fund's goal is to foster creativity and risk-taking. We will provide proximity support to researchers on-site in their faculties to make grant and contract administration easier and more effective. We will support McGill researchers so that they can assume leadership of major collaborative research projects, both at home and internationally. The final element of our mission is our engagement with society. What are the responsibilities of universities in our knowledge-based society, and how can they engage and collaborate with other partners so that society achieves greater benefit from the intersection of their expertise and knowledge. I believe that McGill needs to increase its effort in establishing itself as a valued collaborator with our many partners, our alumni, students, parents, and friends, academic and medical institutions, industry, not-for-profit, social, and public organizations, media, and finally, the community at large. Developing meaningful connections with those outside McGill will deepen academic excellence, stimulating our curiosity and creativity, challenging us to ask game-changing questions, and encouraging us to collaborate across the disciplines. Over the next few years, we will work on building mutually beneficial partnerships. As you know, alumni are McGill's most loyal friends, valued supporters, advocates, and advisors. We will deepen our connection with McGill alumni to help us broaden off-campus learning opportunities and to develop networks that support recent graduates in their careers. We will support innovation writ large, social, cultural, scientific, technical, and medical, to benefit our communities through a new innovation fund and through entrepreneurship training. We will provide a one-stop shop for business partners to help them navigate the complex environment of McGill. And we will reach and engage external partners locally nationally and globally by increasing McGill's visibility as a welcoming, open place. The last two priorities focus on strengthening our workplace and our physical and virtual campus. Both are essential elements for us to achieve our mission. I've had many discussions with people who work at McGill since arriving last September. I've seen their commitment to the university and to providing the best service possible so that McGill continue to thrive. This is a great foundation on which to create a workplace culture to make McGill a more agile and effective organization, a learning organization. It is not simply a matter of improving a few processes or reorganizing units or moving around budgets when time are tough financially. It is about building communities of engagement where every person at every level takes advantage of opportunities to learn, 
where people feel connected to their jobs and their colleagues, and where people feel a sense of purpose and ownership and responsibility. We can become more agile by developing a culture in which great ideas outrank hierarchy, and our aspiration to do better upends our comfortable ways of doing things in the same way. Over the next few years, we will ask people to identify opportunities for greater efficiency, simplification, and process improvement. My colleagues and I, in the central offices of the university, give you our commitment to start right away to work with our teams in our office to make our work processes more efficient. We will start in the central offices of the university and including my own. We will better align our resources to needs and priorities. And we will identify measures to ensure that hiring of new administrative staff is done strategically. As we move forward, we will incorporate technological tools to make our operations more efficient. But we will also invest in people we will ensure that employees are well trained for the jobs they do, and we will develop more ways for them to learn from each other. In short, we will encourage a culture that embraces changes and welcomes new ideas. Our fifth priority is space. When you when we picture McGill, we see its iconic architecture and green campuses. Challenges, however, come along with the beauty of our physical spaces. Historic buildings, as you know, cost more uh, to maintain than do younger buildings. And they're often difficult to adapt for modern learning and research. The Quebec government, in fact, puts McGill space deficit at 65,000 square meters. So we're a bit squeezier. However, the location of our main campus in the dense urban core of Montreal makes it very difficult for McGill to grow. Our vision is for a transformed environment for teaching and learning and for conducting research and scholarship an environment that is sustainable, accessible, state-of-the-art, and healthy. Our priorities include formulating a campus space plan for the next 10 to 15 years, continuing to green our campus, including new student social spaces and east-west pedestrian corridors, carrying out major upgrades to our classrooms and teaching labs. As you may know, a special opportunity is emerging to meet our space deficit. Our neighbor, the Royal Victoria Hospital, whose towers lie between the downtown campus of McGill and Montreal, will be vacated in a few years. McGill University and the Royal Vic share a history, an architectural heritage, and a public purpose. McGill, in close consultation with the City of Montreal, the Government of Quebec, the Government of Canada, and other partners, is exploring the possibility of acquiring the Royal Vic site. Our vision of the Royal Vic is as a carrefour, a meeting place that connects Quebec and the world. Architecturally, the vision is to open up the Royal Vic to make it a gateway to the Montreal. We plan to increase public access, expand green space, preserve heritage buildings, and open the skyline. In this and all other future development, we will be guided by the principles of McGill's master plan. As you probably know, the project is in its very, very early stages and will require a lot of due diligence uh, if we are to pursue it. 
a lot of work remain before any decision is made. I must say that I'm excited by its potential, and I look forward to discussing it with you as it evolves. But I am also, and my colleagues are also, very mindful of exploring this project with all the due diligence that it will require. There you have it, five priorities to shape a more open, connected, and purposeful university. This vision is ambitious, particularly with McGill facing leaner budgets. Of course, we cannot ignore our financial challenges, but we cannot let them define us. This is a lesson we've learned in the past. For example, and this is just one of the many examples I could have cited, following significant cuts in the 1990s, McGill went on to lead Canada in research performance. Our drive, our talent, and our engagement with each other and the community will allow us to succeed. Our commitment to be a community of engagement will allow us to succeed. In our global, highly networked, and rapidly changing world, ways of learning and knowing are transforming day by day. We will need to hold fast to our strengths, and we will need to embrace change. We will need to evolve with, while preserving what makes McGill, McGill. Let me tell you a story, because I was meeting with alumni from McGill in New York City at the beginning of the week. They gave me the perfect definition of McGill, the elevator pitch, and you have to picture a fairly short building. We're not talking about a 40-story building as you have it in New York. A short building, so you don't have a lot of time. What is McGill? This is what they told me. A bunch of smart people doing amazing things and delivering results. This is how now after a few years of, uh, after their departure from McGill and reflecting about their experience here, this is how we define it. And this is how I think we should continue to define ourselves. Our openness to change, I believe, will determine our future success. I welcome your comments and suggestions. Have you given me uh, throughout uh, the first six months of my time here at McGill? And I look forward to working alongside you to help this vision take shape. I think we're ready to move to action, and I'm hoping to work very hard for all of you so that this vision is put in action as soon as possible. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Principal Fauci would be happy to take any questions or comments related to our presentation from the audience here or online. If you are watching on the web, you can submit in two ways, by sending an email to info.communications at mcgill.ca or via Twitter using the hashtag MU address. Again, the email is info.communications at mcgill.ca and the Twitter hashtag is MU address. I'd ask that you keep the questions or comments fairly short and brief and focused on the five priorities the principal presented today. Anyone who would like to comment in more detail or about another matter is encouraged to do so by going to the principal's website where you can give feedback. If you are in the room here today, then please introduce yourself using one of the microphones so that those listening online can hear you. You can use either English or French, whatever you are comfortable with. Allons-y. I'll take this. Hi. Um, my name is Hosai. I'm a graduate student here. Um, I would like to repeat a few words of what, uh, what you said and I made notes of. Um, you've 
spoken about mutual respect in the community and that we should be united by shared values and goals and that you would like to create a sense of responsibility to better mm. our world. And one of the five priorities was um, strength, uh, sorry, engagement with uh, society yes. in which you also mentioned that our responsibility was to increase our ties with our collaborators and partners. And as you're aware, I received this sheet outside. I'm yes. not sure uh, if you received it, but it says that McGill is involved in um, research on weapon development. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Yes. For uh, me, those two are contradicting. Yes. Uh, McGill is involved in research with many partners, including governmental and industrial partners. And uh, as we know, and we know from our history and the world, many of the research that has been done uh, with uh, these partners in the past have created uh, uh, improvements, advancement in knowledge that have benefited society. It is important, though, to make sure that you stay true to your values and your principles. And uh, uh, it is important, as you engage in these collaborations, to test and to ask yourself the questions whether they do or not. Uh, I believe that um, uh, there, the, the case that you're pointing, the specific case involved research with Defense Canada. As people know, uh, a lot of what Defense Canada do is actually help protect us in our environment in Canada in, in many uh, uh, difficult situations such as floods. I know myself. Uh, uh, I've lived through a nice storm. I think many people here have as well. And so I don't think we need to put everything in one basket and, and have a, a, uh, um, a, uh, put everything in the same boat. But I do think that it is important for us to look at partnerships and see and assess for ourselves if indeed uh, they meet our principles and our values. In fact, and, and uh, Professor Goldstein, our VP research is here. One of the things that we've already started is to design a process that will allow us to ask questions uh, before doing the final signature on a contract regarding uh, ethical, ask the ethical question and make sure that uh, with the collaborations that we participate in, we know that uh, we are uh, meeting our own values and principles. So this is something uh, that will happen. I know that the team in research is already working on designing that process. Thank okay. you. First off, thank you for the lovely speech. Uh, my name is Jose Maitat. I'm a coordinator of the Vision 2020 project in the McGill's yes. Office of Sustainability and the founder of the McGill Spaces Project. Um, so first, I was really thrilled to hear that space was a, a core priority. Yes. Um, but my question is, ha having laid out your, your priorities, how do you see these relating to uh, sustainability, particularly McGill's vision for a sustainable future? Yes. As I think uh, you have seen, and of course there will be many more details that will be shared in the next several weeks, but as we think of the campus, and I often talk about both the physical and the virtual campus because a lot of the campus nowadays is also uh, the uh, information communication technology infrastructure. Uh, one of the uh, principles is sustainability. And so in all that we do, we need to uh, 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 challenge ourselves to the test of sustainability. So that is very much part of the plans. And incidentally, uh, I will take this opportunity to congratulate uh, Sustainability 2020 because uh, we've just uh, had the opportunity to see the plan and I must say it's a very, very good plan. A plan that as a community we can feel very uh, proud of. So, merci Great, beaucoup. Thank you. This is a question that comes in via Twitter from Lily okay. Shazam. What will you do to make McGill University a more transparent and accountable institution? Yes, well, I think we've already started <laughs> to uh, make uh, or to, Im to increase the transparency and accountability of our university, uh, making public uh, all that we can make public. And I say all that we can make public because I think it is important, of course, to realize that we have very, very uh, strong legislation in this country regarding uh, privacy 
of individuals. But I think we are, uh, we've already made uh, some progress in increasing transparency on the campus. Accountability. I, I uh, uh, myself believe that uh, one of the way of increasing accountability, in fact, is one where we can meet another goals, and that is uh, maybe to simplify a little bit some of the very, very complex, at times convoluted processes that we have in our universities. I think those processes that get a bit convoluted, in fact, diminish accountability. So this is one area, I think, where we can achieve uh, two goals, get a bit more simple in the, when we can, of course. Certain things are complex and you can't simplify. But I think that when uh, you, you can, we need to ask ourselves if we can simplify some of those processes. And I think by doing so, uh, we will achieve more accountability and also more transparency because people will have a better sense of where uh, locations of responsibilities reside. And, uh, and that will help us uh, in that way as well. Thank you. Um, thank you so much. Our new principal gave us this wonderful speech. And thank you so much for opening this campus to everybody to share your vision. Um, my name is Elizabeth Liu. I'm a graduate student from the education faculty. And I have two questions. And the first one is about the, what you talked about, engagement with society. Um, I'm just thinking about. Do you have any vision or do you have any plan to expand the academic influence of McGill like globally? Because um, this summer I'm going to join some professor's project yes. about how uh, government powers influence higher education in Fudan University in Shanghai. And his yes. whole team was invited to a conference in Tsinghua University in Beijing. Yes. But that conference was organized by some professors from Toronto University. <laughs> Yes. So just yes. like kidding, have to fly across the Pacific Ocean yes. yeah. <laughs> during that conference. So um, I just have a feeling, or actually it's happening, many higher education institutions really yeah. try to expand their academic influence mm -hmm. like globally, especially yes. to the developing countries. So I'm just curious, do you have any vision or plan about this? Yes, yeah. Uh, let me uh, just uh, give you a, a quick answer here. Of course, uh, this deserves a much longer answer. My sense is that uh, McGill has not really benefited as much as it could from its great reputation all over the world. I think I shared with people that in the period between uh, leaving ANSERC and arriving at McGill, I did a lot of work at the European level in particular and people all had the same reaction to the name McGill. It was wow, <laughs> you know, it was pretty exciting for me to hear that. But we haven't really benefited much from having these great reputations. Of course, I would, I would uh, make the hypothesis that among people who are here as professors at McGill, a minimum of 50% are connected, and that would be the bare minimum, are connected internationally. But as an institution, we haven't, I think, uh, developed as clear a plan as maybe we could. I believe it is important to leave, though, a lot of what happens internationally to the grassroots level because that's where the great connection starts. It's with people, it's with people working with colleagues and so on. But there's a time and a, uh, when uh, we might be uh, maybe uh, building on that and providing the support so that these individual uh, connections uh, become a cluster of connections with, with a, another group of people across uh, the world and that we can build it from there. So uh, that's uh, part of the plan. And in fact, uh, uh, one of the things that is happening again in VP Goldstein's portfolio is developing such a plan of uh, uh, McGill's place in the world. Thank you very much. And that's my last it. question is about your vision about student life. Yes. Um, this is like related to my personal experience. I, um, I have been struggling about the housing situation since I come to McGill. First, expensive. Second, it is risk rent, and and third, sometimes it's not safe. So yes. I know it's a huge and more, very difficult problem for any higher education institutions. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you have any plan or any solution to improve the, the student housing, and also about our insurance plan. Okay. We have a plan. Uh, I have a plan, and uh, I have to be honestly, I spent tremendous time for each clan. Like I have to mm -hmm. make the copies of the x-ray and I have yeah. to go back to the clinic, get the receipt and just like, 
waste me so much time, and in the end, yes. I don't climb anymore. I just pay for it for myself. Yeah. So next semester, I'm, I'm not going to buy that plan. So I'm just curious, will uh, Miguel, yes. our management, uh, will have any plan or yeah. any ideas to solve those problems to improve the quality of students' life? Well, I have to admit, this is the first time I hear of that. But uh, particularly the housing, because I, I have not heard. Uh, but it is certainly uh, oh, an issue. It's sorry, an issue I'm for you, and 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 so I'm glad that you've mentioned it. I can tell you, it's duly noted, and I know that uh, Olivier Diens, who is our deputy provost, uh, have taken note of that. Um, it would be great actually for you to connect. Uh, send us a little email so that we can uh, uh, certainly look at this issue because it is important. This is about not only yes. learning, it's about living. Yes. It's important for you to be uh, in a place where you feel comfortable and yes. safe. And so thank you for bringing the thank issue. Thank you very much. Merci. This next question comes in via Twitter. How will you ensure that non-research-based units at McGill, equity, sustainability, mental health, remain a funding priority? Would you like me to repeat the question? Yeah, no, no, I think I understand. <laughs> okay. Non-research-based, like equity, sustainability. Well, uh, how they remain a priority. They remain a priority to our actions and our investments. <laughs> That's the, the short answer to that. And, and certainly, um, I know that they're a priority for this community. And so uh, they translate into priorities in all of the processes that we have, and particularly I'm looking at. Uh, Provost Massey here, they are, that's where we express often our priorities, is through the investment we make in this university, so. Thank you. Yeah. Next question. Thank you. Mm, thank you very much, uh, Professor Fotsi, for uh, your address. So I'm Diana, I'm from the Faculty of Medicine. Um, my question is, uh, what one or two things might we have to do differently or change in the coming years to ensure our ongoing relevancy, our leadership, mm -hmm. uh, to retain the wow factor, the McGill wow yes. factor. Yes, yes. Well, I, I, from, I'm a very practical uh, person, and I think it starts for me with, uh, as I say, we need to really look at the way we work and make sure that we're not wasting anybody's time. This is my, if I had to mention one thing that is my top priority, it is, uh, making sure that no time is wasted because that's the most precious thing we have. When people ask me sometimes, you know, in all sorts of areas, what's most important? Is it money? You know, creating a relationship, for example, creating a partnership. Money always helps. The most important thing is to have the time to devote to it. And so we need to be very tough with ourselves and say, was this? valuable in terms of the time we invested so that we can really put our time into the things that have made McGill McGill and that are a priority. And, and the call is very much on us at the central, you know, I say we point the figure at us. We, it is a duty of us in central offices in particular to make sure that we serve this community to the best of our abilities and make sure that whatever we need to ask you is something that is valuable and is not wasting your time. That's to me, is the number one thing that we can do. May I ask another question? Yes. Um, L'innovation, la quartier de l'innovation, ah. how does that, please? Thank Parfait you. en français, finalement. <laughs> <laughs> Ça va me donner un petit peu de repos. Je vais me reposer quelques minutes, je vais parler en français. <laughs> C'est bon, ça. Oui, quartier d'innovation. Oui. How is it going to figure in our, uh, in our strategy? Comment est-ce que ça va jouer dans notre stratégie? Oui, moi je Merci. pense en fait que c'est un très très beau projet, le quartier d'innovation, parce qu'en fait c'est d'amener euh, la créativité, le sens de l'entrepreneuriat, euh, les connaissances en plein dans la ville pour les, 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 les partager avec les citoyens de la ville et, et, et avec eux construire un nouveau quartier, redonner de la vie à un nouveau quartier. Alors je pense que c'est une très belle occasion pour nous tous, de la communauté mégilloise, euh, de se connecter à, à la communauté montréalaise. Évidemment, ça prend euh, euh, un certain euh, temps à développer ces choses-là. Ça nous prend des gens qui vont, en anglais, on dirait de « champions ». Ça prend des gens qui croient vraiment avec passion à ce beau projet-là et qui y mettent de leur temps. Alors, euh, et euh, moi, je crois qu'il y a beaucoup, beaucoup de possibilités. 
et qu'on va pouvoir réaliser quelque chose dans ce quartier-là qui va être très intéressant. Ça nous donne aussi l'occasion, je vais le dire, de travailler avec des gens qui sont de très bons partenaires, euh, l'ETS, parce que euh, l'ETS a une mission assez... ou bien ils ont une façon d'exprimer leur mission académique euh, assez différente de celle de McGill. Donc, il y a une belle complémentarité entre les deux institutions qui nous permet de faire des belles réalisations. Ça va être une priorité, oui, parce que je pense que c'est une, une belle façon, justement, de mettre en pratique les connaissances dans nos universités, les nouvelles connaissances et d'en faire partager le quartier, Montréal, la société en général. Oui. Merci. Next question over here. Hi, Principal Fautier. Uh, thank you so much for your address. My name is Celine Jessa. I'm a U0 student in the life sciences. Um, in your address, you talked a lot about the changing landscape. Um, yes. I'm obviously just beginning my degree, and I don't know what these um, industries and sectors will look like in, in four years or when I graduate. And so I was just wondering if you could talk yes. a little bit about how um, you and, and McGill plan to make sure that the McGill education um, mm -hmm. prepares students for the flexibility and knowledge and skills that those yeah. changing landscapes will require. Yeah, yeah. you know, for me, um, uh, perhaps the clearest uh, sense of the changing landscape in our world in general came from the words we use. Because there are all sorts of words that I didn't have in my vocabulary not so long ago. A nap? I didn't know, you know. If you ask me six years ago, maybe, that word did not exist. A tablet, that exists, but it didn't mean the same thing at all. And of course, you know, a cloud, well, I thought it was up there in the sky. Well, it's still somewhere, but, you know, we use it in cloud computing. And, and the sense that this gave me so clearly is the challenge of your generation, which is to really create the new industries of the future. And this is the new social uh, innovations of the future. So your call is very much to be creative and innovative. And that is why, as part of the priorities, we have to give an opportunity to people who are students now at McGill to start now, use their creative uh, spirit to start innovating and to start to put that into uh, society because you will need to do that. I mean, to me, it's exciting, it's, but it is also a huge responsibility and a huge challenge. So we need to equip you for that world that is changing so fast. So. Thank you. Thank you. This next question comes in via email from Jason. Good afternoon, Principal Fortier. With the significant changes that have occurred in the music industry, as well as the current changes we are seeing in the paper media based industry due to changing business models, what changes do you see McGill requiring to take in the design, development, and delivery of your educational programs to remain leading edge with respect to the coming changes to the educational industry over the next 10 to 15 yes. years? Yes. Yes, uh, I think a lot of changes which are in fact great opportunities. It, it's uh, coincidental that this morning I was at the meeting of the Federation of Social Sciences and, and uh, Humanities and in fact the topic for their meeting is transformation. The first uh, session was about transformation in uh, the undergraduate uh, uh, learning environment. And what was very interesting uh, these are people who have spent a lot of time thinking about this topic and have a lot of experience, is um, what they uh, describe as new environments for learning. Uh, for example, the flip classroom. I don't know if you've heard that, the blended classrooms. What they're saying essentially is that we have this opportunity to take advantage of technologies to do a lot of pre-learning or tidying up post-learning and use that period of time when we're together in a very uh, in, uh, in a community with other students and professors to create a much more interactive environment because the pre-learning has been done and, and you have a chance afterwards to check the facts or whatnot. So we have a way of really changing uh, the way we uh, think of the curriculum and deliver the curriculum. These are uh, uh, new terrain, new explorations, but of course a lot of people have, uh, have done quite a bit of work. And I think the interesting thing that was said this morning was 
uh, we will take advantage, I think, and we should take advantage of these opportunities. But from all that has been done so far, it is very clear that the place of an interactive environment is crucial for learning. And so we need to think about blending both uh, the technology, uh, the MOOCs, with the interactive environment to create a much more exciting learning environment. And we have this opportunity. So. Thank you. I'll take the next question over here. Uh, hello, my name is In. I came from Beijing, China. Oh, sorry, please see something. Oh. Uh, my name is Im. I'm, I have worked as a lawyer in, in Beijing, China for 21 years and uh, immigrated here for two years. Uh, now I'm a student uh, in the continuous school, take part in the English program. Yes. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, one question is about the international student. Um, I have many students in, in China. Uh, they know McGee have a good reputation, yes. especially the law school, but they have little information about McGee. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, after I came here, many students, they contacted with me, they need me help, but I know certain about McGee. Mm -hmm. uh, this is one question. I want to know your international student policy um, mm -hmm. recently. This yes. is the first yeah. question. The second question is, uh, I want to know how an excellent uh, overseas scholar to become, can successfully become a professor in my mm -hmm. uh, For example, yes. for me, I have published 21, year, uh, mm -hmm. 21 books in China, legal textbook. After I came here, I'm anxious to go back yeah. to school. Of course, mm -hmm. McGill Law School is the first choice. Mm -hmm. um, I wish I know here more and more people wanted to know Chinese law, wanted mm -hmm. to study, and many people wanted to open the door of China. And I'm a Chinese mm -hmm. legal expert. Yes. But uh, when I contacted with some relevant uh, people, they told me you need to, you need a step by step because yeah. I just have a science degree, mm -hmm. a graduate degree. And they asked me, you need to go back to, the, to finish your graduate degree and then step by step, uh, perhaps in the future you can have the opportunity. Yeah. But now this year I'm already 44. Yeah. I don't <laughs> want to waste the time to learn yeah. those basic knowledge. And I'm, yeah. Well, let me, let me try to answer your questions. What I've discovered here at McGill is that uh, when it comes to either admissions to programs or to hiring um, of people, professors included, there's one criteria that is really the leading criteria, and that is the accomplishments of these individuals. I, I was uh, interested to see that, for example, uh, McGill has the largest proportion of international students on its campus than any universities in Canada. But it isn't as a result of saying we want 20% or 25%. It comes in a very organic way to McGill simply by the uh, admission uh, based on achievements and academic excellence. That's the main thing that drives admission at McGill, and similarly for professors. Um, in the last 10 years, I believe that 60% of the professors hired at McGill are not Canadian. They came from outside, or they came from outside of Canada. So there's no um, uh, super plan here to say we need uh, X people from this country and X people from that country. It comes as a result of a very open process which is based on people's achievements and, uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, qual uh, qualifications, obviously, for the position when you apply for a position. That includes principal. But so I, uh, that's what I can tell you of what I know about McGill mm -hmm. is that 
uh, it, it really is, I think, the defining criterion for McGill has been and continues to be excellence and high quality. And that's how uh, you, uh, uh, that's how McGill uh, uh, make either offers of admission or hire uh, people here. Uh, so I want to know if you have some special. Maybe you know. Can I suggest that maybe we meet at another time okay. because you know uh, there might be other questions. But I'd be happy to uh, to talk to you. I I need to tell you something though before. Uh, yesterday it, it just you know things the coincidences are wonderful sometimes. So yesterday I was sitting with the Canadian ambassador to China. He was visiting us at McGill, and he happened to have been taught by a professor, the, the same professor as me. So we already had uh, something very much in common. So uh, <laughs> studying uh, in the same area and studying from the same professor. So, but, but let's make sure that we connect uh, so that we can continue this conversation. OK? Thank you. Thank you. We have five minutes left, so please keep your questions or comments uh, sh short and brief. Yeah, that Thank applies you. to Next me. Next question. <laughs> She's giving me the good order. Parfait, <laughs> Caitlin. <laughs> Madam Principal, my name is David Sincox. Thank you very much for your talk today. I'm from Teaching Learning Services, and yes. I uh, work uh, with graduate education initiatives. And one of your priorities, you talked about student life and learning and the graduate mm -hmm. uh, commitment, the McGill commitment, talking about those two certificates of um, yes. both engineering and, um, excuse me, entrepreneurship and teaching. Could you expand briefly on uh, what they look like and, and how far into the future we're looking to yes. see more initiatives? We will be developing those in more uh, detail. And in fact, of course, we'll be consulting with your unit. Uh, management, I think, is uh, uh, a particular area. But in our thinking, it might expand a little bit uh, to other areas. The goal here is simple, and let me talk about the goal. We know that over 50% uh, of our graduate students will not end up being professors in universities. And that's, from my perspective, certainly a good thing because we need those highly qualified uh, people to work in government or, or in our industries. And so we need to offer them more than just their uh, uh, education in their own discipline. So that's what is in the plan. The provost and, and the team there will be working, obviously, with continuing education to, uh, I put it as, add the meat around this bone here so that we have a very well-developed program to offer. And while you, you're here, you didn't ask me about students in continuing studies, but I didn't mention it in, in the talk. It is in the material, though. We also uh, are thinking of our students who are here in continuing studies and, and wanting to introduce the opportunity for students who meet, obviously, McGill's admission criteria to be able to uh, have a degree from their part-time studies at McGill, which I understand is not uh, very easy right now. So that is one more innovation that we want to bring and one one more action that we want to put in place. Thank merci beaucoup. Thank you, merci. Next question. Hello, Miss Principal. Uh, sorry, right here. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, thank you very much for your speech. Um, so my name is Nicholas. I'm a, a final year undergraduate student. We had the chance to meet last semester uh, when you followed my friend and colleague, Jai yes. bordello uh for an entire day as well. Yes, um, yes, yes. So we're the coordinators of the Kanada. It's the McGill Indigenous Studies yes. community. Um, I guess I'm going to try to keep it short, but basically, I've, this is my sixth and last year at McGill. Uh, through the years, I've seen a growing interest uh, on the part of the stu student population as much as the faculty yeah. um, in, in indigenous issues. Yeah. We've seen outside of the realm of academia as well, the growing coverage of yeah. things such as the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, yes. the I Don't Know More campaign, and so many other things. Uh, my question is very simple. I just would like you to share some of your thoughts with the rest of this, I guess, intergenerational and multicultural audience today about uh, the future of our Aboriginal community or Indigenous issues more broadly at McGill. Um, we just had an Indigenous Studies minor program, which was approved yes. mm -hmm. just a couple of weeks ago, which is going to be mm -hmm. available to students, to undergrads as of next September. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it's a great thing to highlight, and I would just like to hear your thoughts, yes, please. Yes, yes, yes. Um, 
uh, you mentioned a program. We obviously also have a house. Um, my sense is that in this area, it is very important for us um, to follow your guide. I will put it that way, because I think the um, student community as well as uh, the uh, employees community are the ones who are best able to tell us what is the next thing we need to do? What is that we need to add to what's happening here on our campus? Because to me what is important is that the Aboriginal community feel uh, at home and welcome to our campus and respected and feel that they're adding to this great uh, community of learners. We've got a lot to learn. Uh, as Canadians and, and obviously as people who come from outside of Canada, a lot to learn about the Aboriginal uh, people and their culture. And I, my own sense is that it is coming from that community as well as uh, the community of people who um, are interacting most closely with our Aboriginal Centre and the programs that we will learn what we need to do. So that's, uh, uh, I don't want, I, I don't think that I, I'm well placed in this, this office, central office in the university to tell you what it is that we need. I want to hear from you and, and of course, as you know, um, I made one small step. I didn't see it that way because it was just a wonderful day where I went to the center and the, the uh, blanket ceremony also that was a part of Aboriginal Week at McGill. So we need to uh, make sure that we hear from you. So. Well, in any case, thank you. That was Merci. very inspiring and very innovative. So thank you. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. We have time for two more questions. I will take one from email and one from the floor. Uh oh. You <laughs> sure we can't do three? We sure we can't do three? One, two, three. three. <laughs> okay, three questions. Okay, one from we'll email, <laughs> two from the floor. Uh, just want to remind everyone that they can send their comments to the principal's website online. So the question from email is What change does McGill require to remain cutting edge? WRT, the changes to the educational industry over the next 10 to 15 years. What change we need to make to remain cutting edge in education specifically? Well, in education specifically, I think I've, I've mentioned uh, some of the things uh, that we uh, want to do here. Um, and that is to construct a learning environment that offers different approaches, different ways of learning. That to me is essential for a university to really evolve in this century. Uh, we all learn, I, I say that to people, we all learn all the time and we need to uh, integrate that into our thinking about the curriculum and our thinking about what does it mean to have a great learning environment here at McGill. I've heard and I've seen from the students their desire to be far more interacting in the classroom, but also their desire to do some of the things on their own, their own leadership, uh, and maybe working in a more of a coach, uh, uh, highly gifted <laughs> uh, uh, coachy uh, interactions, starting to put the knowledge in action, and of course also bringing far closer than we uh, have now, although I must say I think McGill is, is probably the one university that has brought the most, um, uh, the most closer the interactions between learning, teaching, and research. One other thing I was very, I have to tell you that was, I was really, this is taking too long though, she's gonna bring her <laughs> in my case, but one other thing I was hugely impressed when I came to this campus is to realize how many internship opportunities, research internship opportunities there were at McGill. When you start putting it all together, there's a lot, a lot of activities, far more than I've seen anywhere else. This is great. Research and learning are uh, perfect companions, so we need to bring them together. Thank you. Uh, I'll take this question over Hi. here. Uh, my name's Simon Fulleringer. I'm with IT Services, um, and I'm going to give you a bit of a report. Uh, I really don't have a question, just comments. Um, 
I have a 40-year relationship with McGill as a student and as a staff member, and I very much like what I, I've heard today. Thank you uh, for your, uh, your ambitious plan and the, yes. the principles. I very much support them. I know it's difficult to turn principles into action, concrete yes. action. Uh, as a longtime staff member, I was very, very glad to hear about uh, the investment in staff. I think that's a very important principle, and, and I'm very much looking forward to being part of that. Um, one thing I would like to say, which I think is going back a bit into your own history here, um, yeah. recent history, uh, <laughs> and very much but in the spirit of community yeah. and yeah. openness and diversity yeah. and so on, is I really, I've been wanting to do this maybe for, for months, I would like to thank you and McGill University for taking a, a very quick and strong and principled and public stand on a certain charter, yes. uh, which we all know about. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I support you very much in that. Thank you again, and I'll leave the floor to Merci. Merci beaucoup. So last question, please. Okay. Uh, hello, Madame Fortier. Um, I'm, my name is Dimitro Paltov. I'm an undergraduate student here in the Faculty of Biology, and I just have one question. Um, my question is, have you ever considered increasing a collaboration with other universities, either here in Montreal, yes. Canada, or abroad? Um, through basically inter-university uh, inter research projects yes. uh, to see where, where we could have uh, either undergraduate students, graduate students, or postdoctoral federals uh, who would collaborate yeah. with other students in other universities together yeah. in research projects where they could kind of bring their skills and expertise towards uh, yeah. kind of one common goal and collaboration with these other universities. Yeah. So how, uh, how do you feel about that? Have you ever considered it? Or yeah, absolutely. You, <laughs> you know, that is one thing that uh, I was uh, uh, doing when I was at, at uh, ANSIC and very much uh, building on that. I have, uh, I must say, the privilege of having work uh, with all the Canadian universities from the vantage point of being the president of ANSIC. You know, ANSIC is an organization that invests, uh, you know, a billion dollar a year. You tend to make uh, good relationships with people uh, when you, you go and, and you invest in their universities. So I have great uh, relationships with my colleagues here in Canada, and I'm, uh, I will be working on that. And similarly, internationally, I've worked a lot internationally, and uh, I'm hoping that we can do that. I think, and, and I'll end that because uh, I know Kathleen will, will pull me out here, but um, it, w there are different ways for students in particular to have that very important experience uh, at a global level. Uh, some students will go and do a full degree somewhere else, but I've always thought that another model that we really should uh, um, be open to is that model that you describe, where uh, you are part of a group of researchers here who are connected to a group elsewhere, and uh, there's a flow, there's a great mobility among uh, uh, these two groups, and particularly through the students and postdocs who have the chance to uh, be able to spend time in different environments. So very, very much so. Mm. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Merci beaucoup. Uh, I think that will be it for the questions. OK. Je vais dire juste quelques mots à la fin. Premièrement, pour remercier Caitlin. I want to thank Caitlin for a very, very good uh, job. Uh, this is uh, her second experience to be principal in training. <laughs> so <laughs> this is good. J'ai un petit cadeau pour vous, Caitlin. Alors, uh, on va me donner ça là, tout de suite. I have a, a small gift for you, so there will... Uh, bring it over. <laughs> yes. Voilà. Merci yes. infiniment. Oh, Thank you merci. so much. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. And thank you to all of you for being here. Uh, for hearing uh, what I see as a vision for our university and priorities. We're going to have to work hard. I hope you're ready. I know I'm ready. I love that, that uh, uh, putting in action our goals and our priorities, and, and we'll work hard. 
I also appreciate enormously your advice, your openness to me. You know, the best way for us to work together is to share in a climate of trust and respect. And I appreciate when you come to me and you tell me not only what works well, but where we need to make a few changes in the university. I think this is a great, great way for us uh, to continue building on what we have here. It's a great university. I love this community. I'm so happy to be back home. And I'm back home with you to work. So merci beaucoup et merci aussi à tous ceux qui étaient uh, sur le web. <laughs> merci. Merci beaucoup. <laughs>